Hello everyone. Today I will start another series on one of the hot topics which is related to deployments. We will cover containers using Docker's and later we'll also understand the Kubernetes in this series. But before we start with Docker first, we need to understand how the deployment strategies evolved over the time and we reached to the point where we are using Docker. Before we go back in time and understand how the things were working before Docker, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe. It helps me to work harder and prepare more amazing stuff for amazing people like you. So without any further delay, let's start. Early on, organizations ran application on physical servers. There was no way to define resource boundaries for applications in physical servers and that caused resource allocation issues. For example, if multiple applications run on a physical server, there can be instances where one application would take up most of the resources and as a result, the other applications would underperform. A solution for this would be to run each application on different physical servers, but this did not scale as resources were underutilized and it was expensive for the organizations to maintain many physical servers for many applications. So as a solution, virtualization was introduced. It allows you to run multiple virtual machines or VMs on a single physical server's CPU. Virtualization allows applications to be isolated between virtual machines and provides a level of security as the information of one application cannot be freely accessed by the other application. Virtualization allows better utilization of resources in physical server and allows better scalability because an application can be added or updated easily. Each virtual machine is a full machine running all the components including its own operating system. Then we have containers. Containers are similar to virtual machines but they have relaxed isolation properties to share the operating system among applications. Therefore, containers are considered lightweight. Similar to a VM, a container has its own file system, share of CPU, memory, process space and more. As they are decoupled from the underlying infrastructure, they are portable across clouds and operating system distributions. So why do we really need virtual machines or containers? So if you are looking to improve the scalability, reduce overhead costs and standardize software deployment across multiple machines, then containers and virtual machines are two of the top approaches that are being used today. They are not mutually exclusive. Either both can help your IT team become more agile and responsive to the business demands. Both containers and virtual machines are software technologies that create self-contained virtual packages. Beyond that commonality, they differ in their operations, characteristics and use cases. So to distinguish between containers and VMs, let's understand their building blocks. Now let's see what are virtual machines and virtualization. Before containers came along, the virtual machines was the technology of choice for optimizing server capacity programmed to emulate the hardware of physical computer. It will make it possible to run what appears to be multiple computers with multiple different operating system on a single hardware server. Virtualization is not possible without hypervisor. So what is a hypervisor? A hypervisor or virtual machine monitor is a software or firmware layer that enables multiple operating systems to run side by side all with access to the same physical server resources. The hypervisor orchestrates the available resources like memory, storage, etc. and align a portion to each virtual machine as and when it is needed. Now let's see what are the advantages of using virtual machines. Visually, each virtual machine image looks like a data folder. Each can be moved and copied as easily as you can move and copy other kind of files. In this way, your team can centralize workloads and run several different operating systems without increasing overhead. It's a huge advantage over on-premises hardware. You can also update applications and the operating system without affecting end user experience. However, virtual machines are not without their disadvantages. Let's check those as well. Since each virtual machine includes an operating system and a virtual copy of all the hardware and operating system requires, 
virtual machines require significant ram and cpu resources due to the increase in virtual copies and required resources the software development life cycle is more complex with virtual machines moving virtual machines between public cloud and private clouds and traditional data centers as well can be a very challenging task now let's see the containers and containerization in more detail the container shares the kernel of host operating system with other containers unlike virtual machines they are sharing a single host kernel the containers are lightweight as compared to virtual machines scaling up becomes fast and easy without need of more server space a software container encapsulates an application often a single executable service or we can say microservice along with its libraries frameworks and other components now the bigger question what to use when when considering whether containers or vms are right for you the question isn't really containers versus virtual machines but rather containers and virtual machines or just virtual machines because public cloud environments rarely dedicate entire server to one application you are most always taking advantage of hypervisor to run your applications even if you don't realize it when you run your application in cloud you are deciding between using containers and vms or just using vms containers have greater flexibility and allow better resource utilization than virtual machines alone and using containers and vm together can be a powerful way to run your applications if you are developing a newer application that is focused on portability scalability and maintainability you should consider containerization on the other hand if you have an existing monolithic application that you do not plan to rearchitect or if your application need to interact with an operating system directly then you should consider using virtual machines now in the end let's compare both containers and virtual machines based on some parameters so the first parameter is emulation layer so in case of container uh, uses container engine to isolate the multiple processes in a shared os kernel but in case of virtual machines we have hypervisor if you talk about speed the containers are fairly quick and they start in few seconds itself but on the other hand virtual machines are slower than containers and could take minutes to start up and if we talk about size containers are of very small size maybe in megabytes but if you see virtual machines their size is, will be in gigabytes because they contain a separate image of operating system as well if we talk about the cost then container cost is way less than the virtual machine cost the next component is scalability so it is easy to scale and with also with speed in case of containers which is not there with virtual machine next component is replaceability so it is easy to replace a particular container which we want to stop and replace but it is very difficult in case of virtual machine to replace it next component is resource isolation so in this case virtual machines have strong resource isolation as compared to containers the next component is usage for monolithic application so containers are inefficient for monolithic applications but virtual machines support monolithic applications if we talk about the complexity for development teams for containers it is very low but for virtual machines they have high complexity for the development teams the last component is dev team interaction with in infrastructure so if we use virtual machine then dev team have to interact a lot so the interaction is high in case of virtual machines but in case of containers it is very low that's all for this video i hope you like it please do share your feedback so that i can improve the content in my future videos thanks for watching keep learning